Okay, now we have open source design with humanitarian tools. Thanks. Okay, cool. So I'm going to talk a lot about, so I'm a designer. I come from the uh, sort of mapping background, but from a design function. So it's quite strange for me to be at a conference with people that are what I would consider a lot more technical than I am. So I look at things like UX, I look at UI, I look at design research, and I design for the product for the company that I work for. Um, one of the things that we've been looking into over the last year or so and received funding to look into is why designers as a function or design tasks don't really exist in open source uh, as far as uh, receiving contributions. So why, why don't designers contribute in the same way that people can code, contribute to uh, open, source, open source software? Uh, so I'm going to take you through the journey of our product, um, our project, and try and give you a little bit of the information that I've gathered over the last year on how to engage with designers on open source software projects. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Errol. Uh, it's got a very distracting I in it, uh, but it's pronounced Errol. <laughs> uh, so I'm a designer at Ushihidi. Uh, I use they, them, their pronouns. If you're going to reference me on anything, it'd be really appreciative if you could use my pronouns. And I've been working in design and UX for about 10 years now in various different companies. So Ushihidi, if you aren't familiar with what we do, we've been around for 10 years. We're a non-profit. We create open source humanitarian tech tools. Our first tool it was a, a, to a product we call Platform, and it's a, data, a crowdsourcing data collection platform. So this was created by the founders who are, were based in Kenya. Uh, in Nairobi, and this happened in 2007-2008. Uh, Kenyan elections can be quite um, volatile. There can be quite a lot of uh, social violence, a lot of people uh, stopping others from voting. And what they were seeing happen on the ground during the 2007-2008 election cycle was, was not acceptable to them. So they wanted to create a tool where people could submit reports about what they were seeing happen on the ground. So something that was very accessible to citizens to be able to raise their voices. And Ushahidi is a Swahili word, and it means uh, testimony or like raise your voice in Swahili. So it was really important to be able to provide an open tool that people could submit this information to. Um, so it's been used for the last 10 years on a lot of different projects. Uh, so the original one was around election violence in Kenya, but since then it's been used to map things like crisis response to natural disasters, which is the example that you see on the left-hand side here. This was the earthquakes in Nepal, where the team, uh, the community team there and the people, citizens, used Ushahidi to map various different things around the area. And they used that information, like things like um, where trees were falling from, from, the, from the disaster and where medical centers were. And the official sources used that citizen gathered information to, to inform the aid that they, they um, sent, to the, to, sent to the area. It's been used in lots of other ways over the last 10 years. So anything from uh, mapping media violations and media freedoms in Europe, uh, lots of different mapping of sexual harassment in streets by women or how tech is used against women. It's been used in lots of elections from South America to various countries in Africa to European elections. It's been used in lots of environmental ways as well. So there's been lots of projects that have used Ushahidi to map things like litter, things like where roads are, are not good, or, and also kind of where um, natural water sources are being polluted. So it has a lot of different uses, but really it's there as a community-led crowdsourcing data gathering tool. Our other one, which has recently gone open source, which is uh, 10.4. This is a, a communication tool for teams to get in touch with each other when there is a crisis. So it aggregates all the different communication methods uh, that you might want to use to get in contact with team members. And it gives you a display of who's safe and who's not. So this one, again, was in response to an incident in Nairobi where there was a bombing in a mall, a terrorist attack. Actually, it wasn't a bombing. It was a... It was a gun-led terrorist attack, and uh, we couldn't get in contact with our team members, so we created an open source tool to be able to do that. It, it was a really um, scary time. We were trying to get in contact with people that we weren't sure whether they were safe. So Ushihidi is like 
core value is about creating accessible open source tools that meet these like very, very um, quite difficult needs for humans. Okay, so our most recent project is Open Design. Uh, so what what is Open Design? The title has kind of come under a little bit of scrutiny because the the concept of like open working openly but also contributing to open source but really what it is is designers collaborating and contributing to humanitarian open source software at the moment we're testing on humanitarian led open source software so something that has a element of tech for good uh, at challenge gatherings so you could kind of call them hackathons you can call them design jams you can call them like anything that you kind of want to but really essentially it's about getting designers together in a space, either physically or remotely, to start contributing more to open source and understanding more what they can offer open source. So we did two, two test events. We did one in Berlin last summer and one in Seattle this year. And we piloted testing whether bringing designers together around a humanitarian purpose works. And this was in collaboration with a couple of different people that have now since given us funding to really pursue the ways in which this can work better. So iterating on how to engage designers more. One of them was Design It, a global agency based in various different countries, and one of them was Adobe. Adobe's interest on this particularly is how really the open source, how designers engage with open source and how that really can inform how they work as a commercial product really as a commercial design product so it's really exciting to have them on board and interested in the work that's happening here though controversial it may be so design it were doing some pro bono work for us as a, a non-profit they were interested in how they from a design agency point of view could contribute their design skills for a tech to a tech for good open source project and we did one event in berlin there's a video that you can watch about the the event i can i can send a link uh to to you all and uh then we did a very similar one in seattle so what we, what we did is we created a set of different briefs around one of our open source tools, which was the 10.4 communica communication tool. We created some briefs, we got some designers together, ticketed an event, organized this in much a typical hackathon way, and we observed and tried to figure out what were the good things that came out of it. And the things that we discovered, essentially, which is good to hear, is that most designers that have the time that have the capability to attend an event because it's really important to remember that the ability to attend an event and participate in an event is, is kind of a privilege. If you've got the spare time, you're not in a, like a caring role, you don't have responsibilities. So when they can attend, they want to contribute to these kinds of projects. But the events that we did we're missing a clear definition and scope for the kind of work that we wanted the designers to, to do. So when you have a challenge issued, even like a brief to say we would like to improve this OSS tool in these ways with these kinds of features, what tends to happen when you get designers together that haven't pre previously worked on that subject matter or that tool is they will what we what we call create vaporware or often what we call design fiction and what that means is that they they have great ideas so they'll create things that maybe introduce vr elements or ar elements into an application or maybe they'll prototype something which needs uh, a really complex technological uh, infrastructure behind it, things like looking at mesh networking for when you're stranded in um, like a flooded metro line and things like that. And what we found was those are great ideas, but they're not executable immediately. And a lot of what open source software needs is things that can really feed into the immediate issues that are pressing to, to improve that software very quickly. So we wanted to try and figure out how we, can, how we can do these kinds of things, how to make design contributions much more uh, directly applicable to the kinds of open source work that we're working on, and also then make it 
a template that other open source projects could potentially use, like a methodology, a way of engaging designers, and a way of like replicating this work en masse. So I think it's good to focus on some of the reasons that we gathered, uh, some of the research that we've done informally through these events and formally through interviews with various different organizations and various different kinds of designers to focus on why there aren't as many design-related contributions to OSS. And I'm going to go through a few different reasons. There are quite a lot. But reason number one is most designers don't really have a clue what OSS is or FOSS. Uh, you, say the, you say even open source software to them, if they haven't already become familiar with it, then there's you know, an expression of pure puzzlement and confusion. Uh, design education, so from, you know, your, even your in entry level education, like high school education, right through to higher education, it's only just be beginning to be included in higher education for designers. So when you go to university and do a design degree, some are including open source software within their curriculum now, but most don't. Most still focus on a very outdated, frankly, personal opinion, an outdated view of what the design function is and how design can really contribute to many, many different kinds of organizations, companies, and things like that. And then, likewise, when you're in a role, when you're in a design role, uh, you might be in one of many different kinds of roles. So you could be agency, in-house, you could be in an or a non-profit organization. Again, it's not really something that is promoted within companies. So speaking to different design agencies, speaking to in-house companies, again, open source software might be a regular thing that the technical coding development teams talk about, either as something they're passionate about, passionate about in their spare time, or even on the job, they might contribute to things and have hours that they contribute, but the design functions are largely left out of those kinds of discussions. So the education piece just isn't there for designers en masse, on a large scale. So even, even if the designers know what OSS is, GitHub, <laughs> GitHub can be a barrier. And this actually applies to any kind of contribution to OSS, which isn't necessarily code. So I did a, a big project with Mozilla Open Leaders about how to get more people that are using the software, the open source software, to contribute feedback. Like, how would you start incorporating feedback from your users without doing series of user testing, interviews, maybe you have like things like contact feedback forms, but how, how, how do you encourage a user to directly comment on a specific issue about a specific feature that could really improve that feature? And I remember doing a test with somebody once and they said, what is GitHub? I remember the word git being like a quite a old fashioned rude word in in old English. They honestly had no idea what the word github was. And a lot of, again a lot of designers might know now what github is because they understand if they're in the technological sector that github is something to know about, but the act of using github is a huge barrier for a lot of designers that aren't taught it in school or aren't aren't encouraged to use it in their personal projects. So it's a huge barrier uh, to having co designers contribute to open source software because a lot of open source software exists on places like GitHub and GitLab. So this also ties into how you might want contributions to your, your open source software as well. You might have a tool which actually you can see maybe working on as an app or working in a browser or working in some kind of way that you don't need to interact or pull down the repo to create a, your own local instance. But if, you're, if the improvements that you want to make to your OSS require cloning a repo, creating a local instance, using the terminal, again, those are going to be things that unless you've got really robust documentation that you've tested with designers, you're going to find that they really struggle at certain points with that because it's not key to their function a lot of the time. It's really, they're, they're experts in things to do with user interaction and visualization and improving usability and not necessarily great all the time at things like operating the terminal. Even sometimes if you say the word terminal to designers, they'll kind of 
take a deep breath and maybe, um, maybe they'll stick with it. <laughs> but most of the time they'll be like, oh, the terminal, oh no. Um, okay. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, so this is a really tricky one. I think that this kind of works across lots of different, um, lots of different kind of job roles. But explaining what an OSS contribution is to a designer sounds a lot like working for free. And I know that sounds similar to a lot of other different um, professional functions, but for designers, there is a, a big historical um, prevalence within the industry that um, because design is often seen as a, a fun kind of job or that it's maybe not as technical, that it's still not work. And we get asked as designers when we're young in our careers as well to do a lot of work for free. This will be great for your portfolio. This will give you great exposure. <laughs> this, is, this is something you know, that is very, very, designers are very, very aware of. And when you don't know much about OSS, it can sound like that, but it's not. So the really key thing is if you want to encourage contribution from designers for your OSS is really knowing how to explain what the benefits of contributing to OSS are. It's about building a sense of community. It's about having a mutual interest in, in that particular OSS, what, what that OSS is trying to achieve. So maybe it's the aims of a crisis communication tool. Or, and maybe it's about the same things that a lot of coders get around mentoring and being able to contribute and understand more about different functions and how those, those operate. It, those kinds of conversations can move, move you very quickly away from the you just want a free logo to, oh, actually, you, you value and understand the contributions that design can give OSS. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this is a big problem. We're hoping to have conversations with Adobe about this, but version control in software and processes for designers is absolutely non-existent. There are processes that you can employ, and there's lots of recommendations through this project that we are giving designers, but it's largely absent within our actual design products. So what are we doing to solve these problems? Uh, so one of the things that we're doing is connecting those who are already doing similar work. Some organizations that we are partnering with actively or having conversations with at the moment include Adobe and Designit. We're also talking to the open source design community, which is a great community to engage with designers on. OpenIDO, which has a challenge kind of methodology in, in engaging designers and the Hague Hacks, and then Global Virtual Design Sprints. These are all great organizations that we're trying to pull together that are doing very similar work here as well. We're not looking, with the Open Design Project, we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. We're looking to build really robust partnerships with people that are doing great stuff already. One of the things that we're hoping to do also is, is to tackle that version control uh, problem within design software is suggesting an integration or a layer with commercial design software. And that's one of the things that we're working really closely with Adobe on. And we're also doing a series of different pilot events. So the events in Berlin and the events in Seattle, what we've done is we've learned from them, distilling all the learnings from here, and then we're doing in a series of other events, ones that follow a much more participatory role with people that are affected by the OSS. So if it's crisis communication, we get people that have needed to use crisis communication tools. If it's something to do with healthcare, uh, a healthcare app that's OSS, we're gonna get people that are actively using tools that are around healthcare OSS. So we're very, we're very focused on a partic participatory approach to how designers engage with the OSS. Um, these, are the, these are the locations that we're going to be doing them uh, over the next sort of, six to 12 months. So I just wanted to really quickly, just in case uh, design functions are largely unfamiliar to the audience, these are just some of the things that design as a kind of very large umbrella term can offer your potential OSS projects. It's not just about things like UI, which is user interface. It's not just about visual design or styling CSS or styling front end. Designers have really, really great user research skills a lot of the time. They, they have a really good way of being able to gather insight from people that are using the tools 
analyze that, that insight and distill it into really great recommendations for how to take different tools forward and how to make that as usable and as accessible as possible. It's, these kinds of things can be hugely beneficial for OSS. So if you're interested in some more ways in which to engage designers actively, maybe after the conference, here are some suggestions on how you can do that. So go to where the designers gather. So I'm here at a Phosphor G conference feeling a bit awkward because I don't do any GIS kind of coding, but design conferences are there to attend and you might feel a similar sort of disconnect around <laughs> how many people have your shared skill set, but they welcome, they're welcoming. These spaces are incredibly welcoming. So I encourage you to go to design events and have conversations with them. Open Source Design Net has an amazing forum of designers that are already contributing to OSS in very active ways. It's a small community, a few hundred around the globe, but it's absolutely immense. Like the potential there is so, so good. And learning a little bit about the different functions of design will do you some good. So understanding what you want to ask them is going to really help you when you're constructing your issues. Having a first open issue for any designer to do an inf interface inventory or a heuristic analysis. So again, this is kind of going a bit design terminology, but these are very good first issues to ask any new designer coming into your OSS to do. So there's some informational links there on what those two things are. And those will be great ways to onboard your designers in first issues. And yeah, the piece of work to do to help understand, help designers understand why their contributions to OSS matter and why you value their, their contributions and how, how you can work together uh, to make things uh, a lot better, that kind of piece around education. Uh, I know I'm running out of time, but I've got some really quick suggestions on how to structure repo issues, so not specific design issues. I mean, you can create labels for designers in your repo, even if you're like, I'm not quite sure whether a designer can contribute to this, but you can add a label and see whether a designer comes along and has a look and says, yes, I can do this, this, and this. Invite them to help you understand whether design can contribute to a specific issue. If you can split the tasks up by the kind of design contribution you're after, that would be great. So like user research, user testing, uh, UI improvements, if you need graphics or if you need logos. If you're not sure, you can always ask. Design forum on open source design net is great. If possible, give as much background in the issue as um, you can. Add screenshots of your product if it's hard to get a local instance running. Annotate them if you can. Spend the time doing that so that designers understand what they're trying to improve and what the aims are. Uh, designers like documentation too. I really enjoy writing documentation, <laughs> which is kind of a funny thing to say. But designers could really benefit from uh, a section in your README. Like, here is how we want to engage designers, and here is how we think. Invite them to contribute to that README as well, if they have more ideas on how to better engage other designers as well. And they can really um, help with building better design do documentation for you as well. And add in any design files that you might already have, so CSS files, if you're looking for styling, or any kind of drawings or wireframes or anything that you might have. And the last thing is things to be prepared for. I mean, you know, design can take time. It can be quite a long process, especially if it's an open source contribution. It can take, you know, anything from a few days, depending on the size of the issue, to maybe even a month if it's a really intensive research project. If you're asking designers to go out and engage with your users to then bring their insight to your product, it can take quite a while. Just be ready for that. Early career designers, um, regardless of their age, might not have the same skills and insight as somebody that's much further in their design career. So just be ready and willing to give appropriate feedback to early career designers and try and engage with a, a later career designer to be able to mentor that person as well. Because one of the problems about this is we're not a huge community at the moment. So in coding, in coding um, circles, you have lots of people that you can have mentorship from, like you can have lots of people review your, your push requests with designers. It's, the tooling is not, already, not there yet, so reviewing design 
push requests is going to be quite a long process. And also the people aren't actively there, so you really kind of need to engage with some of the later stage designers to, to mentor the younger ones. And yeah, um, have, have a think about and have a research uh, on the internet about how to critique design and how to effectively integrate your opinions at versus user needs. So opinions are valid and opinions are always going to be there, but also always bring it back down to what your users need to achieve within, the, within your software. But yeah, in, in any case, design is always a mixture of informed expert opinion and user research. So there should always be, from the designer side, good user insight behind what they're contributing. And yeah, that is, thank you for listening. Many. So if you want to check out the project, it's opendesign.ushihidi.com. Does anyone have questions for her, for they? Questions? I was just going to ask if uh, you think it makes sense to have in a Phosphor-G like this, maybe a couple of track uh, or a track or a couple of sessions only for designers to attract them? I th yeah, for sure. It would be really, it would be always really useful to carve out a place for designers at any. I hate using this term technical because designers are technical as well um, in different ways. But it's always good to carve out a place or invite people that are wanting to speak about this. Like the fact that I'm here is is, and I'm sure that there are other people that work within the design function as well are also here. But yeah, making sure that there is a space for them is going to boost this um, the community for sure. Um, so yes, but I would be um, I would be cautious about. It's going to be really tricky because you're just not going to see a lot all at once. Maybe so maybe not um, maybe not expect the first year that you do it for lots and lots of designers to come because, like I was saying about GitHub, there's it's partly fear m maybe, and it's also partly just not feeling part of the wider technology community, even though we do actively contribute to technology. It's just kind of that piece around reaching out and knowing like there are ways in which we can all help each other make better tech, right? Um, yeah, I wanted to ask this specifically uh, about open interface design because Looking at the presentations here, like, I mean, apart from maybe Mapbox or Carto, like most of the interfaces from the smaller companies were quite a horror. Um, how, how can we engage this? Like, which is the platform where we could say what are common interface elements and reach out from small developers like me who don't have an interface designer to share with other smaller companies and, yeah, get designers to look at it only and make suggestions. Uh, this is really good to hear because this is uh, this is something a question that I get asked all the time from organisations like how can I how can I specifically around interface get more inclusion uh, from designers so it's always good to hear things repeated because it seems like when you repeat a problem you know that there is a potential solution there so. Uh, having a first issue which includes an interface inventory is great. So interface inventory is something that Brad Frost came up with. Brad Frost is um, a semi-famous sort of front-end engineer person, kind of spans between design and front-end. Uh, but he created this, this toolkit for designers to be able to take inventory of any kind of interface elements. It's really, really great to have as your first issue. I would say the if you're looking for something very immediate, again, I would direct you towards the opensourcedesign.net um, forum and create a post saying, I would like uh, this to be looked at, this UI to be looked at around this, this tool. And you will, you will definitely get uh, comments back on that. But as we, as we start building 
as we start building a community and an understanding of these are the ways in which we can support and facilitate designers to seek these out, at the moment, this is just what we're trying to solve, this enabling designers to go and find your project. Because ideally, what we'd want them to do is search for maybe a label or a project that they can contribute to and know and just be able to do it straight away. But I think at the moment, it's actively going out and finding those those designers or collaborating with us on an event for your tool. So what we're doing with the first series of events is we're focusing on one of Ishihidi's tools, but the future of the project is about opening up the methodology, opening up the workshops to be able to say, okay, your tool, your open source tool is looking at this epic and this epic or this feature and this feature. Great, we can build a open design workshop around that and we will collaborate with different open source uh, companies to create those kinds of events. Did that answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much for your presentation.